So my current obsession as of late has been virtual reality. There's just something about the technology and experiences it offers that just fascinates me. There's so many different things you can do in virtual reality that you really can't find anywhere else. Unfortunately, such immersive experiences come with a high price tag. You not only need a headset, but also a gaming PC to go with it, and a powerful graphics card to boot. That means that a full VR setup can easily cost over $1,000, which is more than many can afford or are willing to spend. So when I heard about the Oculus Quest, a $400 headset that offers a full VR experience and a standalone portable form factor, I lost my shit. And those of you who saw my previous video on the Quest would know that. Not only was VR gaming finally more affordable to me, I could take it anywhere I wanted and not have to be tethered to a PC at all times. So while I'm saving up for one and anxiously awaiting its release, I did some research into all the different experiences VR has to offer. And I have to say, if I wasn't already excited for the Quest, I am now. So here's my list of 15 games I'm looking forward to on Oculus Quest, in no particular order. Most of these games I've never played before, at least not in VR, so I'm listing them here based on initial appeal. Now some of these games have already been announced for Quest, others are rumored to be coming, and a few in this list probably won't come over at all, but I certainly hope they will. Let's get started. You probably expected Beat Saber to be on the list, and rightfully so. It's one of the biggest VR games to come out in recent years, not to mention it's really fun and addictive. So let's just get it out of the way so we can focus on other titles. Beat Saber is a rhythm game where you have two different colored lightsabers that you use to slice boxes of the corresponding color. Not only that, you also have to slice it in the direction of the arrow on the box. It's easy to learn, hard to master, and is a blast to play. This game hasn't been confirmed for Quest at the time of making this video, but when asked if Beat Saber would come to Quest, the developers definitely hinted at the possibility. Personally, I don't see any reason why Beat Saber wouldn't come to Quest. Its popularity combined with the Quest's somewhat reasonable price could make Beat Saber a system seller. Imagine the Oasis from Ready Player One. The one from the book, not the crappy movie. Now imagine if it were more primitive and also caked with memes and anime characters and you've got VR Chat. VR Chat is a massive social platform where users can don a virtual avatar and interact with other users in various areas and worlds. Everything in the game is user created with tons more content being added constantly. It's arguably the biggest social VR platform out there despite what others claim. I doubt it'll come to Quest given how demanding it can be but hey, it can maybe happen. On the bright side, the copycats have fixed this concern for us, at least partially. Not one, but three social apps akin to VRChat have been rumored to show up on Quest. One is Alt Space VR, which doesn't offer custom worlds or allow you to import your own avatar, meaning it offers little to no user-generated content. Another is Rec Room, which takes a different approach to social VR. Not only does Rec Room promote being more kid-friendly than other social apps, it also has different game types you can play with others, such as laser tag and paintball. It also offers user-generated worlds, but instead of building worlds in external 3D modeling programs and then importing them into the game like in VRChat, Rec Room has players build worlds from scratch with various different shapes they can place throughout. While this means that worlds don't look as nice and professional as VRChat, it does allow for regular users to build worlds without any required knowledge on how to use external software. Not only that, they can build worlds with friends if they so choose. However, I've saved the best alternative for last. High Fidelity, not to be confused with the John Cusack movie or the Daft Punk song of the same name, is a social VR app that comes closest in terms of similarities to VRChat, and has already been confirmed to be on Oculus Quest. It allows you to import your own avatar as well as create and share worlds. It even has other items such as objects to place around your virtual home or to wear on your avatar. Unfortunately, High Fidelity sells their user-created content in their marketplace, which may be annoying to some compared to VRChat's everything is free strategy. But to be fair, the Oasis had you pay for virtual items too. In terms of which social VR app is best overall, VRChat wins. But in terms of on Oculus Quest, High Fidelity could be giving it a run for its money. LA Noir is my absolute favorite game. It's a crime thriller made by Rockstar, set in 1940s Los Angeles where you play as LAPD detective Cole Phelps as he goes around solving mysteries and arresting suspects. It's got an excellent storyline as well as interesting and challenging cases and a large open world map to explore. When LA Noir was first developed, the creators hired real actors for all the characters and made 3D models of their heads and facial expressions. 
allowing for extra realism that really shows, especially during some of his many interrogation sequences. I played it a good amount on the Xbox 360 and then beat it when it came out on the Switch, so when I heard about a VR port, I was sold. It's not the full game, just seven cases from the original that were reworked for virtual reality. That's still plenty of stuff to do, and from what I've seen, it's pretty ridiculous. The developers made the mistake of allowing the main character total freedom of hand placement during any given moment, meaning that you can just act like an idiot while playing and have a blast with it. That said, it's still L.A. Noir, still a fantastic detective game, and it will be awesome to revisit in VR. Especially if it came to Quest. It would probably be one of the tougher titles to get running, but it could happen. Who knows? Robo Recall is a sci-fi shooter in which a virus causes personal assistant robots to rebel against their human masters. You play as Agent 34, an employee of Robo Ready's recall department, where your job is to quote-unquote recall robots by straight up killing them, and wow is it fun. You can dual wield guns as you shoot down killer robots, you can grab them, rip their heads and limbs off, throw them out of the bots, use them as shields, all sorts of stuff. It feels like the robot equivalent of Doom executions, except the Oculus touch controllers allow for extra realism. You're not simply pressing X to rip the robot's limbs off, you're physically tearing them off and it feels awesome. You have dual pistols and shotguns at your disposal, as well as a variety of other weapons. When you pull one out, a new one spawns in your holster, meaning you have virtually unlimited ammo, letting you just go to town on these robots, smashing them to your heart's content. Even just watching gameplay makes you feel like a badass. Robo Recall was one of the first games announced for Quest, and I cannot wait. Pixel Ripped 1989 is a game within a game that takes you right back to the 80s and the joys of classic video games. In this 2D side-scrolling platformer, you play as Dot on her quest to retrieve the Pixel Ripped, a magical stone that contains the soul of her world, which has been stolen by the evil Cyblin Master. But at the same time, you play as Nicola, an elementary student and hardcore gamer who'd rather play her trusty gear kid than pay attention to class. Not only do you have to focus on Dot's quest, which harkens back to the challenge and difficulty of classic 2D platformers such as Mega Man, you also constantly have to distract your teacher in order to not get caught playing video games in class. But soon enough, the levels of the game start to merge with the real world and become more than just a 2D game, creating an experience that oozes of nostalgia. It's a love layer to classic gaming and an experience you can only find in VR. Pixel Ripped 1989 has already been confirmed for Oculus Quest and is another title I'm looking forward to. Right, that's it! Take yourself with that infernal light box to the headmasters at once! Pixel Ripped 1989 Electronauts is an electronic music creation tool that makes it easier to remix music than ever before. It offers a catalog of EDM titles from various popular artists that you can choose from, and each song is broken down into its base components which you can put together as you see fit. You wield dual batons that you can use to hit different colored shapes, and those spheres play specific notes. Different colored spheres offer different instrument types. There's also various other tools that allow you to adjust beats, add different effects, switch between different sections of lyrics, etc. It's easy to pick up and play, and has a custom music engine that takes care of all the rhythm and pacing for you. You can just have fun and do whatever you want with the instruments, knowing that no matter what, the result is going to sound pretty great. And there's nothing cooler than jamming out to a song you're putting together in real time. Its neon art style also enhances the experience, making you feel like a member of Daft Punk, which its optional two-player mode just enforces even more. Electronauts is currently rumored for Oculus Quest, and I certainly hope it gets ported over. I've never been a huge fan of Star Trek, but I liked the J.J. Abrams movies and I adore the Orville. So when I heard about Star Trek Bridge Crew, I was intrigued. Being able to serve on board the Bridge of the Enterprise and even be the captain if I won is pretty cool. Bridge Crew is a multiplayer game where you take on different roles of the Enterprise Bridge and complete missions as a team. Whether that being exploring uncharted territory, rescuing survivors, and even engaging in battle. And if your friends can't make it or you just want to play alone, you have the ability to partner up with a real-life Star Trek computer, IBM's Watson Supercomputer, and issue commands to your AI crew in real time, which is super cool. Bridge Crew hasn't been confirmed or rumored for Quest yet, but would be an excellent addition to its lineup. When most non-gamers think of VR, they might think of Sword Art Online, the popular anime and manga series about a fictional MMO of the same name set in a massive fantasy world. 
In SAO, users don super advanced full dive VR headsets that communicate directly with the brain, allowing for unparalleled realism. The plot of SAO in a nutshell is that the creator of the game uses the technology against the players and traps them inside the game. If they die in game, they die in real life. In order to escape their imprisonment, the players have to beat the game. While we won't have full dive VR for a while, fans have always wanted to play SAO for themselves in a VR environment. Unfortunately, an SAO branded VR MMORPG doesn't exist yet, but luckily the next best thing does. Orbis VR is the world's first VR MMORPG, built from the ground up for virtual reality. Orbis has everything you'd want in an MMO. A large open world with hundreds of different players, interesting characters and lore, different classes you can play as, dungeons that you can explore with others, voice chat, a trading system, large and difficult bosses, and even virtual pet dragons. Orbis VR isn't confirmed for Oculus Quest, but will be awesome to have on the platform. Now let's just hope it has a log out button. Superhot focuses mainly around a single concept. Time only moves when you move. You're tasked with defeating all the red enemies in a given area, and having control over time is awesome. You can take down enemies before they can even retaliate and feel like John Wick the whole time. It's more of a puzzle game than it is a shooter, as you try to figure out how to defeat your foes. It's a simple concept that's a whole lot of fun. Superhot also has a fantastic plot that I won't get into for spoiler reasons, and is a VR staple. Superhot has already been confirmed for Oculus Quest, and I'll definitely try it out. Job Simulator is a game that takes place in the future, when robots have taken all the jobs and allowed humans to do whatever they want with their lives. But, if you wanted to experience what having a job was like, you can step into the Job Simulator and relive the glory days of having to work. You can choose to play as an auto mechanic, office drone, gourmet chef, or convenience store clerk, and complete specific tasks. Or just do whatever you want. Watch this. Hey, now I'm almost hurt. Yeah, I'm almost hurt. Move through this. Incredible. In the future, I'm still an asshole. Job Simulator hasn't been confirmed or rumored for Quest, but I'd be surprised if it didn't eventually come over. Pavlov VR is a multiplayer shooter in the same vein as Call of Duty or CSGO, except that it's played exclusively in VR, allowing for more freedom and immersion. You have more range of motion thanks to the Oculus Touch controllers, allowing you to freely wield weapons in a realistic manner. Not only that, but you have to use the weapons realistically as well. You aim at a target by physically looking down the scope of the gun, and if you want to reload, you actually have to take the cartridge out and put a new one in. It seems tedious on paper, but in game it adds to the immersion and realism. You play as part of a team with up to 10 players total, and can talk with your teammates and develop strategies in real time as if you are actually on the battlefield. The base gameplay is incredibly similar to other shooter games, which actually isn't much of a detriment to the overall experience. It's the same experience you'd find in other shooters, except in VR, which makes it more realistic than those games. I've never really given competitive shooters a fair shot, but considering that Pavlov is more immersive and I actually have friends who'd want to play it with me, I'll definitely be putting it under consideration. Pavlov hasn't been confirmed for Quest, but is rumored to be coming, and will be a great game to have on the system. Minecraft needs no introduction. It's one of the biggest games ever and has been ported to what feels like every electronic device under the sun. And of course, Minecraft has a VR mode. Currently available on PC and Samsung Gear VR, but not Oculus Go for some reason, Minecraft VR mode allows you to view your creations in 3D and become immersed in your Minecraft world. You can do everything the base game offers in VR, and the Oculus Touch controllers allow for extra range of motion as well. And if you want a break from VR, you can switch to a virtual living room mode that allows you to keep playing on a large virtual screen. Minecraft would be an excellent addition to the Quest's lineup, although nothing's been announced so far. So those are the games I'd love to play on Oculus Quest, and I absolutely cannot wait to get my headset. If there's a VR game I didn't mention that you're looking forward to, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, bye!